Have you ever wondered where the power comes from when you flick a switch, flick the light switch? I always think it's quite amazing that you flick a switch here in Sydney and somewhere else, um, maybe hundreds, maybe thousands of kilometres away, a power station somewhere is actually increasing its output and seeing that power down towards you. Pretty amazing. Although it must be in these days of the internet where I can click on a computer and access a server on the other side of the world, maybe it's not quite so amazing anymore, but still, still I think it's still, it's still pretty impressive. The uh, electricity um, that's supplied to Sydney, that uh, comes to us here um, and people in the inner metropolitan area through a complex mesh of cables. Uh, and those cables are connected to um, a number of transmission lines that head out um, across the state. Sydney gets its most of its power, which is all of its power, from power stations down the south, um, from hydroelectric stations, from wind farms um, down near Canberra, and from up north, uh, from thermal power stations and from uh, station, power stations out west. And the, the purpose of the electricity network is to bring that power to you. See if I can work this thing now. So in terms of where we fit in, in terms of uh, Ausgrid and Transgrid, uh, you can see the supply chain uh, up here on the screen. Generators, and there are multiple of those, as I said, right across Australia, all can feed into Sydney. So I don't know if I'm, I'm moving too much here. Uh, the transmission network, uh, which is Transgrid. Uh, we, we're like the highways and freeways of the road network. Uh, we're the bulk suppliers, um, the high capacity links between uh, major centres and the power stations. The distribution network, which is Ausgrid, they're like your roads, your city roads, your city streets. Um, they connect to the freeways and highways and channel off um, power to, um, to your buildings, to your homes, to the industries around the place. And together, um, Ausgrid and Transgrid, um, we are the network that supplies the uh, inner metro area of Sydney. Of course, there are other players, and you might know them, you know, the Energy Australias, the uh, origins of the world. Um, you see them, you get, they're the people you get your bill from. And of course, at the end, there's the consumers. Um, a number in this, well, all, I suspect all of you in this room uh, are consumers, uh, personally. You may also be representing uh, larger uh, consumers in industry, um, or people who look after consumers, like the councils and so forth. So, Sydney. Uh, if you think about Sydney, uh, why is uh, safe and reliable electricity really important? Uh, well, uh, some interesting facts. Um, it's estimated in 2013-12-13 uh, uh, that the CBD of Sydney generated over $64 billion worth of um, uh, economic uh, activity. In fact, we're going to talk about not only the CBD of Sydney today, but also the inner metro area, and combined uh, that, that part of Sydney uh, generated over 25% or over a quarter of the uh, state uh, economic output. Uh, so we're talking here about a really important part of the state. And if you think about it, uh, what happens if we don't supply, if we don't provide that reliable, safe supply? Well, the trains stop running, the traffic lights stop working. And even if you could get to work, no air conditioning, no lights, and maybe even no email, although that might be a good thing. So uh, without power, without electricity, the city comes to a standstill, uh, and that economic activity is at risk. So we've got a really important task, we believe, to ensure the ongoing reliability and safety of that supply to Sydney. Now, how do we do that? Well, uh, I'll, I'll draw an analogy. I'll go from highways and roads to cars and tyres. Um, if you think about your car tyres, how do you ensure that they're reliable? You know, it's really important that they keep working. Uh, well, you drive within the limits, you don't overstress them, you check the tyre pressure occasionally, uh, or maybe it should be more than occasionally, and you also check how much wear is going on in there. So in the transmission system, we're doing the same thing with our cable network. Um, we are making sure that we drive it within its limits, uh, manufacturer's limits. We're checking it kef um, regularly, monitoring its condition, checking its um, pressure. Um, of course, the other thing we've got up our sleeve is we carry a spare. Just like most people carry spare tyres in their car, we carry spare capacity in the network. And it's through that um, that we 
uh, can, um, well, not guaranteed, but ensure a high reliability and the higher safety that people expect uh, from the network. So one of the things we've got now, though, just like your car tyres, is that whenever you use them, um, they age. They, you use some of the condition, you use some of the, um, the rubber every time you drive them. And of course, you, the degree of how much they age, how fast they deteriorate, depends on how well you drive them. Uh, if you're doing burnouts and uh, aggressive driving, they're going to last a shorter period of time. If you drive them carefully and smoothly, they're going to last a longer period of time. Um, but eventually, uh, they run out. Eventually they wear out uh, and eventually you have to re uh, replace them, otherwise the risk of uh, a puncture of a blowout uh, increases. And, and for us now, a lot of the network that, was, that supplies Sydney today was built over 50 years ago. Uh, there are some newer bits, but a lot of it actually is quite old. Uh, and while we've been monitoring it, uh, we've been managing it carefully, uh, we've been doing repairs where necessary, we've been doing remediations where we find there are issues uh, and where it's cost effective to do so, eventually you get to the point uh, where you need to actually replace the tyres. And for us and our forecast for Silvs and Osgrid, we're looking out and we're saying, well, actually, we can see a time um, in the not too distant future, certainly as Greg says, in our perspective, it's pretty close, uh, by the end of this decade, um, where the spare capacity um, that we would normally expect the network to have um, won't be available. Uh, and that's why um, we're having this forum today, is to look at saying, well, OK, we can see that coming. We can see that uh, the tyres are getting down in their tread. Uh, we will need to do something uh, in the not too distant future. Uh, as I said, for us, that's uh, four or five years away, uh, but we need to do something. So in terms of the whole problem we're looking at here, uh, we could actually um, simplify it down to one of supply and demand. Um, now, I could really stretch my tyre analogy here and say it's really like saying, um, do the tyres have enough capacity to bear the load of the car? This might be a bit of a stretch. But it's, um, it's the supply and demand. And, and the name of the game here is to make sure there's more supply um, than there is demand. The tyres have more capacity to carry the load than the load is you're putting on the car. Looking at the sort of levers we've got there uh, on the supply side, or the obvious one first is existing infrastructure. Uh, our existing infrastructure, managing that, trying to get the most out of that, um, tweaking it a little bit uh, is, uh, is one way um, to get there. Uh, looking at possibly new infrastructure through that network planning process uh, is another option uh, for us in terms of that supply side. And another, another option uh, is the uh, local generation. Um, so not only can we bring generation from far, further afield, if there's local generation in the Sydney area that doesn't need as much as the network, that may actually um, help us as well. Of course, on the demand side, uh, you know, how much load are we going to put on the car? Well, that depends on a number of things. It depends on things like population growth, uh, energy efficiency, demand response, um, electric vehicles uh, going into the future. Uh, those sort of things are all things which influence how much load we're putting on the network, um, how much demand is going to be. Uh, and it's probably a good time now to talk about that when we're looking at that balance of supply and demand, what's really important for us is actually the peak um, demand on the network. Uh, a little bit like the road network, it's no good having an, a road network that's great for the average flow of traffic. We all know that there are peak, peak hours or peak two hours sometimes in Sydney. Uh, and we need to manage and design this around the peak. So I'm talking here around um, meeting the capacity that's required uh, uh, at the time it's required, not an average. And of course, in that balance overall, um, what governs what the right balance is, how much you should have, uh, is the rel are the reliability standards. Um, so that's why I've got them in the pivot there. Um, they are in this equation as well. Uh, and so uh, today, uh, following me, you'll hear uh, a number of speakers and, and they'll be looking at the various dimensions of this picture. Uh, they'll be looking at the supply side uh, of things and we'll kick off with talking about existing infrastructure and then moving to network planning. We'll look at local generation and what um, that might be look, look like for us and we'll also look at the um, demand side. And I do believe that any good and creative solution to a problem doesn't just pick one answer. It actually always looks at, looks at and combines a combination of solutions. And I think 
we've got a great initiative here in the Powering Sydney project where we're trying to pull together um, a range of possible solutions and see how they best fit together to form a good composite solution uh, going forward. Uh, and no, there's big dollars at stake. You'll hear about some of the costs associated with new infrastructure um, and some of the challenges and some of the other ideas. So that there's nothing simple about this problem, uh, but it certainly is an exciting one to explore and explore it with our stakeholders. Thank you.